Welcome to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Kitchens. Welcome back to the show. I am so excited for our guest today. Her name is Catherine and she just happens to be my sister and she has such an incredible story, which is why I wanted to bring her on. So she has three kids. She's got a hubby. Um, she also has two dogs. So really technically it's family of seven and she runs a plant-based household, which is incredible. So she's going to share some amazing tips on how she does that, how she plans, how she preps, um, how she saves a ton of money when it comes to plant-based eating, which is a common question that I get. It's like, well, how do you eat plant-based? Isn't it expensive? So we're going to, we're going to bust that myth for you all too. So welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you. And I know a little bit about Catherine's sort of plant-based journey, but I do want her to give a background for you listening on sort of how she came into plant-based eating and to like how she incorporated it into her family as well. So Catherine, like Take us back to the beginning of sort of how you transitioned. When I had first started the plant-based lifestyle, I had just moved into a new house. So that was new. And I think we had just gotten pregnant with our second uh, child, our second daughter. And so that was new as well. And so it was like a few new things were happening and my sister had been, well, Ashley had been (laughs) uh, plant-based for a while. And I just saw the good things that it was doing for her. So because of these new things that were happening in my life, I thought, how about another wonderful new thing? You know, you can never have too much good things right in your life. (laughs) (laughs) So we decided, well, let's see, you know, if this really is like a good step, um, as far as our diet goes, let's try it. So we tried it. I could tell that there were definitely, definitely differences. Like after I even ate a meal, uh, I felt elated instead of like bloated. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was huge to me. I couldn't believe that, um, just eating a plant-based meal actually made me feel so good compared to, you know, an animal product meal or whatever. Yeah. Well, and that's a great point. Cause for everyone listening, I know some of you know my story, but obviously Catherine was right there with me as we, a large part of our life was on an Angus cattle farm. So as you can imagine, both of us were eating a lot of meat, a lot of animal products. I mean, that was like the center of our diet. It's amazing for you that you kind of started making that connection of like, hmm, I feel a little differently, maybe even a little better. Like you said, elated yeah. after eating some of these meals. Yeah. A common misconception is that plant-based eating is bland doesn't taste as good. And it's so funny because it's just the opposite. I started eating these meals. I started feeling good after eating them, but I also started tasting ingredients and flavors that I had never tasted before. And it was like, what? Like what? I've been missing this, this whole time. Oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> And I can, I mean, I know a lot of people listening and I can definitely relate to that too. Is like, you think, oh, plant-based eating, like even growing up, it's like, you had to eat your broccoli or gosh, I remember when mom would make like bean soup. It was the worst, it was the worst thing ever, (laughs) but you're right. You actually like start tasting food. It seems like for the first time. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you had bought a new house. You moved in with your hubby. Jesse, and then your daughter, your firstborn. Right. Uh-huh. And it, so at this, at this time during this transition, you know, that was obviously really exciting. You are pregnant with pregnant with your second one, and then right. you're adding sort of plant-based why, why you're pregnant to this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Okay. It just seemed like a lot of energy building, uh, lifestyle changes in a sense, you know, it wasn't like it didn't seem like a lot of work per se, you know, it seemed like something that was going to do me good, you know? And yeah, like you said, at the beginning, it was like kind of like positive change. It's like, why not one yeah. more positive thing? Right. Yeah. 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 We were on a roll. <laughs> yeah. So was the transition for you, was it gradual? Was it overnight? Do you, can, can you kind of remember how that went? I think you had got me a cookbook. I think it was the Oshi oh Glows uh, cookbook, her first one. And so I think... I want to say that we kind of just did something overnight and making all of our meals from that cookbook and then maybe just going online and finding maybe something that sounded good, you know, putting plant or plant-based or vegan in front of whatever we wanted, you know, like lasagna or something like that. The cookbook was great. You could see the picture and you could see the ingredients, you know, and the recipe and everything. 
and you could know what it was supposed to look like. It was definitely the way to go for me anyways. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. And I think that's great too, because everyone's journey is so different when it comes to plant-based. I mean, some people, they thrive just doing it overnight. And some people it is a lot more gradual. Right. Like for me, it, it, it took three years for you. Sure. It was more yeah. of like an overnight thing when any way that you choose to do it is valid, which is great. And Catherine yeah. too, I really like that you said, basically what you said is like, you don't have to compromise on maybe the foods that you loved as a child, like enchiladas or pizza. Like right. you can veganize or plant-based anything yes. these days. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll taste it maybe even a little bit differently than what it was and be like, Ooh, I like this better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious because you were sort of, you know, you were transitioning to plant-based and pregnant at the time. Did you notice, and obviously you've had a third since. So during your pregnancies, did you notice anything different maybe with your second and third compared to your first, like in how you you felt or. I think that I had less swelling, a lot less swelling while I was plant-based with my first, I, I, I was so swollen by the end of my pregnancy. It was horrible. You could see it in my face and everything. Um, but I felt like I didn't get like that with my other two. Um, I also feel like I had more energy because I also worked out, I guess, with my second two pregnant mm. or my last two pregnancies. Yeah. So that helped as yeah. well. That's a, that's a good point too, is that it wasn't yes, like the nutrition aspect was important too. But like you said, you also, your lifestyle kind of changed too. Cause I remember yeah. you too, starting to work out more. And I mean, yep. y'all I'm going to brag on Catherine, like she'll wake up at 6am, get a workout in before the kids get up. I mean, she just, Ooh, yeah. she makes it a priority. Yeah. So it's which is recently with a little baby, but when he gets out of his baby stage, yes, I'll be back to it when he starts sleeping through the night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 But I think but, that's cool. It's like yeah. a lot of things sort of shifted in your life too. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious. And I know that a lot of people listening are curious about this too. So you, Catherine does such an amazing job of like planning of making so many meals from scratch, which is incredible. Um, so kind of tell us a little bit more about how you, especially, you know, feed a family of five and structure your week, structure your meals. Um, and we'll get into how she saves so much money doing it too. (laughs) I basically started by making sure I had a base for my week. Um, I wanted to know each day what I was basically going to be making um, as far as the cuisine. So like we started with Monday being Mexican. Um, So every week when I go to plan my meals, which every week is not perfect. Some weeks I don't do this, but um, I would say the best weeks are when I do this. So what I'll do is, so Mexican Monday is for Monday. So I'll go and see, you know, what haven't we had in a little while? Um, what sounds good to the, the kids? And then if I don't have a recipe that I have made before, then I'll go find one by using, you know, our search engine and using blogs. And then, you know, Tuesday's Tofu Tuesday. So then just like that, I go through the week and plan what meal goes with what day. And then obviously once I have those meals, I'll get the ingredients. You know, if I don't have them, I'll mark them down on my list for the grocery. I love that. So kind of each day is almost like a theme and you're able to sort of correspond the meal according to that. Yep. Yeah. And it's great too, that you kind of, you bring in the kids, you know, their sort of input as well. So how how does that go? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One of our children is pretty picky. So what I'll usually do is try, I want to make sure that, you know, maybe she's not getting like this, like special attention in in a good way, you know, to show that we're a family. So we all eat together. We eat the same things, um, but we do have our preferences. I like that you highlighted the fact that you are a community, you're a family. And I know that you really prioritize trying to sit down as a family, especially in the evenings. And I think it's great too, that you sort of like like you said, everyone, everyone has to eat and everyone also has their preferences. And so instead of maybe like saying that, Oh, you know, you have to eat this, you sort of bring everything to the table kind of separately and everyone sort of picks and chooses what they want on their plate. Yes. I think there's a way to do things where everybody can eat what they would like to eat, even if it's not the same things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that makes it a much more like positive environment as well around the dinner table. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Because Um, When we first started parenting, (laughs) Mm -hmm. when Danny was one, two years old, you know, we were like, no, you know, this is what I made. So you need to eat this. You know, we thought we were really giving her good values and morals, but um, we have learned since. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think, I think it's great, to, especially as a parent to be so transparent about like, okay, parenting is not perfect. And we've made some mistakes right. in the past and right. we're going to make some, some mistakes in the future and right. we sort of just learn from it and adapt and evolve and figure out right. sort of what's the best approach for yeah you and your family. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I think that's awesome. Okay. Well, for anyone listening, I think having that themed meal each day can be really helpful. So like you do the Mexican yeah. Monday, you do the tofu on Tuesday. And I know that you do usually yeah. curry on Thursdays. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> What's Wednesday and Friday, if you don't mind sharing just for people listening. Um, Wednesday is kind of an off day. It's, it's called world Wednesday. So typically we do maybe like an Asian meal or Italian and then Friday we say is fun Friday. So Aww. we try to make it somewhat simple, but also fun. The girls love pasta. So a lot of times it ends up being pasta, you know, the chicken lists nuggets or something like that, that the girls really like. Mm-hmm. So it's something simple and fun and we can all enjoy it and eat it together. Yeah. There, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. You're a busy mom of three and two dogs. Uh, yeah. How do you save time throughout the week or how do maybe you cut down on just constantly having to be in the kitchen and prepping food? Prepping is huge. Just finding those little bits of time and knowing how I can save time when I'm prepping by maybe prepping for like two things at once. I think like when I'm prepping the food, I also cut up extra vegetables for my nine month old to eat at dinner. You know, maybe that's in six hours, but now I know I have them in the fridge ready to go. So I don't have to do that later. Oh, I also prep my fruit twice a week because fruit doesn't really stay good um, cut up for very long. So twice a week, usually on like Sunday and Thursday, I will cut up a cup and a half of fruit per person. So I'll cut that up and do the three or four days worth of um, chopped fruit. And then each day I can just go and pull out a fruit and add, you know, yogurt and seeds, peanut butter. Uh, (laughs) That's my favorite. And, um, and then I can eat it. And that was so easy instead of having to chop fruit every day, you know, cause I, I have a fruit parfait every day cause I love it so much. So that's what I do uh, twice a week in order to cut down um, on my breakfast for sure. It's so easy to pull out a thing for my girls and give it to them um, and ask them if they want a piece of toast with it or if they want me to make pancakes or, you know, whatever it is. Um, But they have something to eat as soon as they get up, if they'd like something right away. Yeah. So that probably makes your mornings maybe just a bit more relaxing, a little less chaotic. Yeah. 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 Yes. (laughs) Because Danny, she's old enough. She goes and grabs her fruit by herself. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And I guess to give us an idea of your kids' age, would you mind telling us how old your three are? Oh, sure. So my oldest is eight. Um, the middle Bonnie, she's four and then Asa, he's nine months. Nine months. Yay. Yeah. Well, and two sort of with that, and I know we've touched on this before and how do you kind of make that connection because Danny, the oldest eight-year-old wasn't plant-based, um, wasn't right. born into a plant-based fa- family and Bonnie was. Yeah. So how, how have you managed maybe even just transitioning Danny over and to like sort of helping her make that connection with what she's eating, how she's feeling, you know, if those things kind of yeah. pop up. Yeah. I think Danny, so she's the eight-year-old. I think she's become more in tune with her body just over the last few years and how she feels. She eats breakfast at school some days And for a while there, she was going to the nurse like every day. And I would get a call from the school at like 11 o'clock and they would say like, Danny says her belly hurts. And it it happened so many times. I just, you know, I wasn't sure like what it was, if it was actually like her belly hurting or if she just maybe wanted out of class, you know, she's a kid. (laughs) Sometimes you just don't know, you know? And, um, and then finally one day she said, mom, I've actually been having the milk that the school gives with my cereal. Um, so obviously it's dairy milk. And I said, oh, Danny, that that's probably it. And so of course, as soon as she stopped eating that with her cereal, okay. she never needed to go to the nurse again. Oh, and it was like, wow. oh my gosh. So that was one thing um, that I, I, you know, I didn't even have to say anything. She basically found out for herself that that dairy did not settle well in her belly. Yeah. 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 And so because of that, and probably just, you know, from your own experience, like it sounds like she's just become more in tune with her body, what she eats and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How do you think that's maybe helped her? I mean, and she's so young, which is pretty incredible. Like 
transition from, you know, kind of eating the standard American diet to being more plant-based and, and yeah. listening more, like making that connection at a deeper level. Well, I do know, like when she goes for snacks and things, she knows like, yeah, she sometimes wants sweets and maybe some processed food, but she also goes for like the sugar snack peas or the carrots or, you know, whatever it is. And it's like so cool to see her and Bonnie go for vegetables, you know, instead of other things. I remember it was April Fool's like two years ago and, um, I decided, oh, I'm going to give the girls vegetables for their fruit instead in the morning for breakfast. And I gave them their vegetable bowl for breakfast and they both kind of just looked at it and were about to just go on with their day, you know, and just eat it. And I was like, girls, are you serious? It's April Fool's. (laughs) (laughs) That's one of my favorite stories is like, they just didn't think really anything of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. They didn't, they didn't appease me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's amazing. I, so you highlighted the fact that, you know, the kids sort of have the option to choose what it is that they want to eat. So whether it's like, like like you said, maybe like a cupcake at school, or they want to choose the sugar snap peas or the carrots. How, how do you kind of go about doing that? Like sort of giving them the autonomy or giving them the choice and not restricting or telling them what they should or shouldn't do. Yeah. I mean, so kids, they're, obviously very smart, but they're um, obviously young as well. So sometimes they just don't understand, you know, they're not doing that critical thinking in their head. And so I think one thing I try to do is tell them up front, you know, absolutely you can have that, but I do want you to know that we've had maybe this and this today. So do you want to have that? Because that may, that extra sugar might be bad on your belly or something like that. So then it kind of gets their wheels turning to think for themselves, like, okay, have I had enough sugar or have I had enough of this or whatever? And a lot of times they'll be like, no, okay, yeah, I'll have something else. You know, obviously sometimes they'll pick that sugary thing or whatever, but it's starting just getting those habits of, okay, you know, I'm starting to eat this. Let me think about what I've had today or what I've had in the last, whatever, um, however much exercise or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever, just thinking of those things, trying to weigh all your options. Yeah. And just because it's there, you're kind of giving them that platform to take the time to reflect on what they've had, take the time to maybe get in touch, like you said, with them. And like, is this going to make my belly feel good? Or, you know, maybe do I actually want, you know, the carrots or the banana or whatever else it is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. And quick, just quickly too, how do you manage them? Yeah. Going to like birthday parties. And I know that they're always, you know, hanging out with friends and going to different events. So how do you also manage that too? Cause obviously everything isn't vegan, you know, when you're letting them go off to someone else's house. Yeah. I mean, luckily sometimes they'll have like, people will have veggie trays and stuff like that. So we can, you know, get into those. The girls obviously would like to have a piece of cake or a cupcake or something like that. So they, they will usually do that. But one thing we also do is bring our own food. A lot of places, a lot of times I just pack like a little cooler that has, you know, maybe, I don't know, some chopped fruit or some cereal or, you know, a granola bar or something like that. So if the kids do get hungry and they're like, Ooh, there's nothing like I want, you know, maybe there's a lot of meat in some things, you know, and they're like, mom, there's meat, which they've done before. And I'm like, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. They can just get into my bag and see what I have. And then that also helps on cost too. If like, you know, we're out, uh, doing grocery shopping or things, you know, a lot of times I know people will go get Starbucks or go get something to eat, you know, somewhere, but it's really nice having that bag of food. So I can just say, oh, here's a snack, you know, and that was, you know, free or whatever, because yeah. we didn't have and then extra money. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of going above and beyond and taking that extra step to do a little bit of prepping before you go to a party or somebody's house, or yes. even are running groceries for a couple hours. Cause like we right. talked about earlier, Catherine, when she goes to the grocery store, it's not just like 10 minutes out and back. Like it's, a, it's, it's a haul. It's like half yeah. of the day. Yes. The kids are always asking, can I have a snack? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's great too. And, and too, it goes back to that like you don't restrict what they eat. Uh, and especially when they do go to a friend's house or when you all go out, you know, they, they have that choice, but it sounds like more often than not, they're coming to you to see what you have in your snack bag or kind of choosing Uh things that align with what makes them feel good too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, Beautiful. So give us an idea too, of how you maybe do your grocery shopping. I know we've talked in the past about, 
you know, cause you're very great about sticking to a budget. Again, the misconception is, well, plant-based eating is so expensive. How do you do it? But yeah. what people don't know is it can actually be incredibly affordable. And for you, Catherine, like you live in a pretty rural area that, you know, you don't just walk to like a whole foods 10 minutes down the road. I mean, I think a great right. a whole foods is probably well over an hour away from you. Maybe not. It, uh, it's about an hour. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like, and I think it's good for anyone listening, like your grocery stores aren't super accessible. You have to drive a little ways to get to the grocery store. So give us an idea of how you do your grocery shopping and, and save a lot of money. You know, plant-based eating can sometimes be a little bit of an investment, I would say. And so one thing that we try to do is buy certain things in bulk, as I know you do as well and other people mm-hmm. do. So what we try to do is get our seeds and our nuts online, usually from like Amazon, uh, they'll sell Kirkland, which is Costco. Yep. So that they always have a really good price for those. Usually that'll be an extra like $25 a month. If you divide it, um, it's more than that upfront, but it'll last us for three to six months, depending on how big of a bag we get. So that's one thing is how we save money. Second, I shop at two cheap stores. Uh, I shop at Aldi, um, which is similar to Trader Joe, I've heard. Mm -hmm. And then I shop at um, Payless, which is a Kroger. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So both are great options for organic and fresh produce and organic, just like grocery aisle items. They all have their own organic um, brand. So that's really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then, uh, I, I also try to look for sales. So, um, maybe one week we won't eat blueberries, you know, because they're not on sale because they can be like $6 for a pint. Um, but when they're on sale, they're only like two bucks for a pint or something, you know, or yeah. So that's another thing that we do is just try and look for sales. Like we, we buy a lot of the same things. Um, but then also, the things that we kind of um, don't eat every week are those sale items that I add to the grocery list every week. Yep. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. And speaking of Aldi, I feel like I keep seeing things pop up on social media of like these vegan finds at Aldi. Like, Oh yeah. Uh I mean, yeah, it's just incredible. I know there's clients of mine will send me pictures and I'm like, how, where did you get that? And it's like Aldi. Yeah. Yeah, And they sell it for a fraction of the price. It's amazing. Yeah, Yeah. 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 I would highly recommend if, if you have an Aldi close to you to go check it out and see what you can find there. Cause they're just coming out with more and more vegan options, which is a great idea. Yes. Yeah. And so shopping the sales into the bulk piece, like you said, it is sort of an investment up front because you're paying a little bit more. So it can kind of yeah. be a sticker shock, but like you said, you know, over time, especially if it's going to last you a few months, six months, it's going to end up saving you money in the long run than maybe buying a smaller bag at a grocery store. So that's a, that's great advice. Yeah. Or quinoa. We do quinoa as well or certain yeah. flowers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All great ideas. Awesome. Well, anything else that you would like to share or add or anything that we might've missed that would be helpful? As far as being in a family, I think one of the, the best things you can do is just be loving, you know? Um, like I said, it's kind of hard when my little one is picky, but, um, I think it's taught me a lot of stuff, you know, about being humble and, you know, how to extend love in the right way. So I would just say patience and positivity are are two things Mm. that you need in your plant-based journey for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I know that you've, you've touched on, um, with your oldest being picky too, just how you, you really try to make it a positive experience at the dinner table. You know, you don't like yeah. force her to eat certain foods, but everything's right. sort of laid out. So people can kind of pick and choose what it is that they want. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, so much, so much good stuff. Thank you so much, Catherine, mm-hmm. for coming on and sharing your story and just sharing tips for, you know, people who, whether they have families or even, you know, if they don't have kids or a par- partner, like, thank you so much for just sharing some of those tips as well. Cause we can all save a little bit more money. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Until next time, keep thriving. <laughs>